millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. How the heck does my health savings account actually work? In this episode of Shauna Shares. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur Shauna Come to Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Welcome back to the show, my friends. So good to have you here. We're going to talk about a topic today that a lot of people have a lot of questions about. In the last couple of months, I have gotten questions from Teresa and Robert and Susanna and Jamila and countless other people about health savings accounts and HSAs, what their kind of their street name, if you will. And there's a lot of confusion about, A, what is a health savings account? What does it cover? Why would I even need one of these things? So I thought, Let's just devote an episode to it. We had Rita from HSA store on, I want to say April, maybe May of this year. And I understand health savings accounts maybe aren't the sexiest topic to talk about, but I'm going to tell you they are really, really sexy. Like in the land of money, (laughs) there are a lot of things that are super sexy. A health savings account is very sexy. So Let's try and work through what it is, why you might even want this thing. And then I'm going to plug in some pieces from the interview with Rita. And she does a really great job of of describing what you could spend your health savings dollars on. And so I'm going to piece some of that in here. I think it's a really great interview. And if you've heard it before, it's just a little reminder of, oh, yeah, right. Okay, exactly, right? So a health savings account is a tax-advantaged account that lets you save pre-tax dollars, right? Just like you save in your 401k, those are pre-tax dollars. The same thing with my health savings account that you can use for future qualified medical expenses. Things like doctor's copay, my contacts, contact solution, pain medication. I mean, you name it. The list is very, very long of things that you can actually use these dollars for. Now, you can also invest the money in mutual funds tax-free if you want as well. So you can use your health savings account as a pre-tax way to pay for those expenses that you would normally just be paying out of pocket for all sorts of different things with Again, copays and medicines and things you're going to get at the drugstore. I mean, it the list is on and on. Or what you can do is you could actually use your health savings account almost like another retirement savings vehicle. So you could park whatever the annual max is that you can put in your health savings account. It's going to adjust every year. 
You can put that amount of money in, invest it, and it grows just like your 401k grows, right? And then you just have an extra pool of money. And the cool thing is that at any point in time, you could decide, you know what, nah, I just want to reimburse myself for those medical expenses I've paid over the last couple of years. So save your receipts, you have your receipts, and then you could just take the money out of your health savings account. So it's really like the most amazing product, I think, out there. Now, you have to have what's qualified as a high deductible health plan to set up an HSA. And an HSA is going to be a separate account from your medical, you know, your medical plan, right? So you're going to have your medical plan and then you're going to have your health savings account. And most health savings accounts are going to give you a debit card or something that you can access when you are, say, picking up your prescriptions or going to the drugstore to get various cold medicines or whatever it might be, right? So you can utilize it in that way. You certainly don't have to, right? It's just an option. So you got to figure out if your plan is a high deductible plan and if it is health savings um, eligible. And you can find that all out through your HR department if you don't know. If you have the option to create a health savings account, I argue, why not? Why not? Even if you decide not to put any money into it, at least you have it there, right? So these amazing benefits are you can make these pre-tax payroll contributions, your earnings are going to grow tax-free, and then you can enjoy tax-free distributions for these qualified medical expenses. So it's kind of like a trifecta in a world where we don't have a lot of trifectas when we're talking about money. And the cool thing about a health savings account, it's very different from, well, I shouldn't say very different, but it's different in one really important way from your flexible spending accounts. So these are the type of accounts that typically we're more familiar with. A health savings account, it's a little bit different. So with a health savings account, We don't have to use our funds or lose our funds every year like we do in a flexible spending account. So I really love that. If I've put in a couple of thousand dollars a year, I don't want to just have to like scrounge around to find things that I can (laughs) spend my money on at the end of the year. That's, to me, not a really effective way to do money. So with an HSA, if I put a couple thousand dollars in and I decide that, well, I'm not going to use it, maybe I'm going to invest it, whatever it might be. It's okay. The money is still there. When I get to the next year, I can add on to that money or I can use that money. So it's a really cool advantage. So as I mentioned, every year, the amount that you can put in your health savings account changes a little bit, usually about 50 bucks. So for 2021, if you have an individual health plan, you can put up to $3,600. If you have a family plan, you can put up to $7,200. In 2022, that bumps up to $3,650 for individual and 7300 for family. Also, if you're at age 55 or plus, you can add an additional 1000 bucks on. So again, it's just another way to really sock away some tax-qualified money. And again, you can spend your money on so many different things. Doctor's visits, pain relievers, eyeglasses, sleep aids, shoe inserts, sunscreen, dental, you name it. (laughs) There is a huge list of what you can spend your money on. And the, the best news is that because of the tax savings on your contributions, you can save on average about 30% on your qualified medical expenses. Now, of course, this is going to change for every person, but you have that savings right? Savings is amazing. So it's almost like we're moving our money from one pocket to another pocket. We're getting some tax advantages for it. And then if we're using it on medical expenses, it's almost like we're getting a discount, which is fantastic. So there are so many different ways, again, you can utilize this money. And if you decide that you just want to invest your money, it can really turn into an incredible retirement nest egg. So you can invest money just like your 401k, You have access to these funds anytime. You can enjoy lower fees, transparent pricing, all sorts of things that you normally have. 
So your health savings account can become like your ultimate retirement nest egg, if you will. You can invest your money just like a 401k. You can access your funds. There are low fees on the funds, all sorts of amazing things. And after age 65, you can use your health savings account for any expense. You simply just will pay ordinary income taxes just like your 401k. So there's a lot of flexibility. And I had a health savings account for years until I got a different type of health plan, but I really miss my HSA because it was so impactful. And again, I didn't have to make the decision to use or lose my money every single year, which I think is uh, is really great. It's the one thing I don't really like about flexible spending accounts is you would get to like November, December, and you're thinking, okay, I guess I got to go to the dentist and I guess I got to go here and I got to buy this and then I got to do that. And not like that's the end of the world, but if you're trying to exhaust money just to exhaust money, I don't know, it doesn't doesn't really make sense to me. So the health savings account is so incredible. So I'm going to plug in a little bit of that interview with Rita where she's going to talk a little bit more about what you can spend your money on and a little bit more of the mechanics behind the health savings account. Before we jump into that interview, a quick word from our episode sponsors. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Nainen, the host of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. 
let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. I think if there was an official HSA fan club, I'd probably be one of the <laughs> official members waving the the biggest flag. I've I've been a longtime fan of of HSAs and I don't want to keep the HSA love to myself. I know it's it's still something that's a little mysterious for a lot of people out there. So I thought we'd just jump in. I'd love to hear from you. What's so great about HSAs? Sure. So um so there's flexible spending accounts, FSAs, and then health savings accounts, HSAs. And they're both um, accounts where consumers can set aside pre-tax funds for healthcare, what we call in the industry qualified medical expenses. And that could be anything from your doctor copay to a dental visit, vi- vision visit, all the way to um, all sorts of products that are FSA and HSA eligible. Yeah, I I love that. I love the pre-tax because I think with particularly with HSAs, there's so many different ways that you can use them throughout your life. You could obviously use them for those expenses, but you can also just bank money in there and and save it for retirement, which I think is really great. And I know there are so many different acronyms and it can be <laughs> really confusing to people. Uh so Tell me a little bit about like what are the differences mainly between like FSAs and HSAs? Sure, sure. So um, maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about the similarities and then dive into a yeah. little bit of differences. So FSA and HSA funds both reduce your taxable income, and you can use those funds, like I said before, for qualified medical expenses. The biggest difference is that um, the type of health plans that they're tied to. So FSAs are tied to uh, traditional PPO type plans, whereas HSAs are tied to high deductible health plans. And so in order to sign up for one or the other, you have to have the right type of health plan. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So h- how do you figure out, like, how would you figure out if you actually have the right type of health plan? That's a good question. A good rule of thumb is that um, for HSAs, you would have a high deductible health plan. And it usually says that in the name of the plan, or it could be, um, you can tell by looking at the deductible amount. So for a high deductible health plan, you need a deductible um, for 2021 at, of at least 1400 for individual or 2800 for family. Okay. So that's a sizable deductible. <laughs> it, yeah, so so tell me a little bit about like how they how they differ, or, like how you would choose which one is right for you. It really depends on the individual and how um, how much you use your health care, right? So for those that are young and only go to the doctor once a year for the annual checkup, and that's basically it, um, a high deductible health plan might make more sense because the premium, the monthly or per paycheck premium, is so much lower. Um, than PPO plans. It's a very personal decision. It really depends on how you use your healthcare um, and what the number of appointments you go to per year and the number of specialists you have. Right. So definitely take a look at how you normally spend your healthcare dollars through the year and hopefully use that as, as a little bit of a roadmap to help you figure out which one is better for you. And I know one of the main differences I know that I, I would love to hear you talk about is FSAs, you need to spend the money by year end or you lose it. And HSAs are a little bit different. Can you talk about those, those sort of differences? Yeah, yeah. So for um, FSAs, there is a use it or lose it component. Um, now, this is where it gets tricky. There is the pure deadline. There is the concept of a grace period, which employers can adopt. And that means that they give you an additional two and a half months to use those funds after the end of the year plan year. So for example, (laughs) if you're on a 1231 plan year end, which is one of the most common use it or lose it deadlines, you might have until March 15 of the next year to use your funds. Okay. A second complexity of this, which employers can adopt is a rollover. So employers can choose to roll over up to $550 
past your 1231 deadline for you to use in the next year. We love to make things complicated, right? <laughs> I, yes, absolutely. So is is your best strategy like to go to HR? Like how would you find out this information? I think HR benefits department is a good resource. There um, is information when you're doing your uh, open enrollment that will have will tell you what your options are and what the what the employer has opted into in terms of is it a pure deadline? Do you have a grace period? Do you have rollover? Okay, right. And so then with our HSAs, whatever money we bank in there throughout the year, we don't have to to spend it correctly. Like we can we can actually keep the money in there if we wished. Yes. So HSAs are, um, I like to think of uh, HSAs as an FSA and a 401k having a baby. <laughs> I like that. Right. So it's similar to FSAs where you can use it for your co-pays, your LASIK, your products, for your sunscreen. Um, but you can also save the money and you can save it year over year, right? So you don't, there's no user to lose it. Um, and you can also invest the funds. Um, usually you have to reach a certain threshold depending on the plan in order to invest, but it is an opportunity to have that triple tax free feature that HSAs are well known for. Yeah, I like I like the sound of triple tax free. <laughs> There's not many <laughs> things that are triple tax free. <laughs> I, do you happen to know the history of how HSAs came around? Because I know FSAs were around for quite some time and then all of a sudden it feels like HSAs just kind of came onto the picture. Do you know the history of how that happened? Yeah, so it, uh, FSAs actually have been around since the 70s. Um, so that's probably really you've heard about it for a very long time. Um, HSAs were developed in the mid 2000s um, when health plans came out with um, these high deductible health plans that offer consumers uh, a lower premium option as a way to control the rising health care costs. And that's when HSAs came about to be tied to these high deductible health plans. Um, because they have high deductibles, they wanted to encourage people to save, right? So that yeah. they're not hit with that $1,400 out of pocket without some uh, account that can help them offset that that cost if there was some major incident that they had to pay for. Right. So it's it's, again, just kind of like how um, everything changed from retirement plans to the the companies basically helping you out to now you got to save for retirement for yourself. Sort of the same evolution has happened with healthcare, where exactly. these plans are more expensive, and now you it's the onus is on you to figure out how to use these tools and techniques to to save money so that uh, we maybe don't have to go to credit cards or other things like that when a big big health bill comes up, but. I would love to hear from you because you're you're in this a lot. Are there any strategies or or money tips that you could share about the right sort of like spend or save strategies to figure out, um, you know, I guess to even navigate healthcare costs because they are so expensive? Yeah, and a good way that I do it personally is that I look at all my I have a spreadsheet and I um jot down um, or collect all my healthcare spending costs. Um, usually I look historically to see what I spent on the previous year. And then I take that and I see, a, all right, um, based on how I've been spending, what is the best plan for me? If mm -hmm. I had a really healthy year and I didn't break my toe and a leg and all this other stuff that I did last year, then <laughs> oh, maybe no. I go for a high deductible health plan. Last year was a rough year for me. I fell downstairs, broke my toe, ended <sighs> up spending a ton out of pocket. Um, so there are certain events that you can't really budget for. Right. But for example, if you know that you want to um, <clears throat> get LASIK to fix your vision or uh, Invisalign to adjust your teeth, that might be an option where you put more funds into either FSA or HSA uh, the year prior so you can plan for that. Mm, I like that. Yeah. And I, I know I get this question a lot. A lot of people are in that phase where they're starting to have babies, mm -hmm. and obviously they can hit their deductible very easily and and really hit maybe even the out of pocket max depending on mm -hmm. the, the situation. If you're 
like thinking that next year maybe you might want to try to have a baby? I mean, is that a good time to really ramp up like your HSA or FSA funds to try and navigate some of those costs? Absolutely. I think, um, and it's funny because baby and mom is one of the big categories on our websites. Um, And what people don't realize is that there are a lot of FSA and HSA eligible products that are um, for new moms or new families, young families, Um, everything from breast pumps to uh, baby health monitors, um, baby sunscreen, all sorts of other ancillary products that, you know, a lot of new young parents use. Um, and on top of that, there's the, uh, I guess, doctor costs and hospital costs associated with that. Yeah, which can be very expensive. <laughs> yes. It's funny because so many people I hear feedback of, well, I, you know, I've been healthy like basically every year. I don't know why I need to save, set aside some money for my deductible. I'm, I'm never going to get sick. I'm never going to get injured. And I'm over here like a caution flag. <laughs> like, well, there's just some things that maybe might happen that you might not be aware that that would happen. And, you know, you talked about your toe and all of those costs can be so expensive. I mean, I don't know if you know, but like, do you know any um, like average costs for like hospital stays or anything like that? Oh, that's a good question. I think that actually depends very much on the the um, location as well as what you're oh, staying right. in the hospital for. But I've had friends, I had a friend who had a heart attack. Yeah, he was young. He was 30 and he had a heart attack wow. and ended up in the hospital for a few months. Um, luckily, he had really good insurance that covered a lot of it, but their out-of-pocket cost was tens of thousands of dollars. Wow. Wow. And so if he had like an HSA, he could probably use, if he had enough money, he could use that money to cover those costs. That's right. And there are certain expenses, like you don't plan for a heart attack or a broken toe, obviously. Right. But there are things that you can plan for. If you're planning on having a child, you can start putting more money away in the years leading up to that. If you have some surgery um, that you need to do for whatever you know reason, once again, you can set aside funds for that and plan for that. And I think the key here is planning, being right. aware and knowing that maybe um, you have to plan six months in advance for it, but being more aware and planning for things um, and being more thoughtful. I, I like that. I like the idea of a plan. It's so easy to not have a plan. <laughs> It's much harder to have a plan. Uh, do you know, uh, we're in 2021, like what are the contribution limits that you can put into these different accounts? Sure. So for flexible spending accounts, um, you can contribute up to $2,750 for an individual or $5,500 for a family. And then for a health savings account, it is um, $3,600 for an individual or 7,200 for a family. Rita's got so much to share with us about FSAs and HSAs, so let's jump back into the conversation. So a potentially a sizable amount that you can put in there. Yeah. Uh, and, and certainly if you're doing it year after year, you could really build up a nice account balance. And in years, some years maybe you use more and maybe some years you use less. I think that's one of the things in particular about the health savings account that I really like. Yeah. And you should also um, look into employers matching. So I've been at several employers where they've matched. Um, it, it ranges, right? So anything from 400 to to thousand dollars for an HSA, which can help offset those costs as well. I like that. I like the sound of employer matching. It's a very good sound. <laughs> um, you talked about a lot of the products that you can pay for with your health savings account. I know on the FSA store and HSA store sites, there's a lot of great resources, but maybe could you tell us like a little, um, maybe like insider secrets about like some of the expenses we might not think about that we could use FSA or HSA dollars for? Sure. So, and I'll speak from my own personal experience. Um, I actually get acupuncture. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I've used my funds for acupuncture, which can be pr- quite pricey. Uh, 
Last year, uh, as part of the CARES Act, uh, feminine care products and OTC products became eligible. So we're talking about everything from period underwear to traditional tampons and um, pads and a lot of stuff in between. Uh, mm-hmm. And then on the OTC side, I mean, everything from allergy medicines to painkillers. So there are a lot of different types of products that are uh, FSA and HSA eligible. So how would it work like if you ha- have an HSA and let's say I'm going to Target and I'm, I'm buying, you know, over the counter medications and feminine products or whatever it might be, how would it then work if I had an HSA? How would I actually pay for those those items? So there are two options. If your uh, HSA provider uh, issues you a card, you should get it in the mail with the provider's name. Then you can use that card and buy those products um, either in store or on our site, anywhere that sells those products. And it should go through. Um, you can also purchase those products with your credit card and submit a receipt. So you have the option if um, you don't happen to have that HSA or FSA card on you. Yeah. And I had an HSA a few years ago and I loved the card option because it was just like a debit card where I would just, I mean, I obviously I would have to remember like, oh, use my HSA card. Um, but it was just a really easy way to pay for a lot of things. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me clear my voice. Um, it was just a really easy way to pay for a lot of things. Uh, and just made the process, I think, really seamless. I know a lot of friends who have HSAs submit their receipts, but either way you do it, uh, I I think it's great to, I would love your insight on this, but like maybe create like an inventory list of all the different things that you buy and, and that could be eligible for HSA or FSA funds. Exactly. And that's what I did years ago before I even knew about FSA store. Um, I was buying, I, I don't leave the house without sunscreen. So I go through a lot of sunscreen. <laughs> That's good. And hopefully good long-term for my skin, right? <laughs> right. Um, but one of the things that is not well known that is that there are a lot of high-end sunscreens that are eligible. Things that you might find at um, large makeup stores that mm. are, you know, $30, $50, $60 dollars even um, that if you're using, you can use your pre-tax funds for. So we on FSA store and hsastore.com have an eligibility list um, that goes through all the types of products and services that are eligible. And so we pride ourselves on helping users uh, understand, manage, and use their funds. And so part of that is also just providing education, right? Helping people understand what's eligible. And so when you think about creating that list of eligible products, uh, think outside of the box, right? So you know, acne medications are eligible, anything with salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide. Um, But those are things that people might not consider. Mm. Yeah, I I would love to hear a little bit more about FSA store and HSA store because I was on there perusing around and you have a lot of great like spending guides and other resources. Are there any guides that are maybe more popular than others that you can let us all know about? It depends on the season, but in the summer, we actually have a um, guide to sunscreen that people are, we see a lot of traffic to. So for example, um, what is mineral sunscreen versus chemical sunscreen and what Mm. should I use? Uh, You know, I switched over personally to mineral sunscreen years ago and it actually tends to be more expensive um, than chemical sunscreen. But we have a lot of, that's actually popular this time of year as people start looking at summer plans um, and stocking up on that sunscreen for their outdoor activities. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that difference. So I'm definitely going to need to check that one out. Uh, so through these stores, though, you could actually like purchase products as well, right? That's correct. In addition to our learning center, we um, have e-commerce sites. So fsastore.com, hsastore.com um, that sells, <clears throat> excuse me, that sells over 4,000 products. And it ranges, right? Everything from your Tylenol and your Advil and your Band-Aids all the way to the uh, $400 baby health monitor and the breast pumps that are quite expensive as well. Right. So it's like a one-stop shop. I like that. Uh, I'm I'm curious, do you like wake up in the middle of the night with dreams of dreaming about FSA and HSA things? (laughs) 
It's a little scary, but I have. <laughs> <laughs> I like I that know. honesty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that honesty. Well, you're in this like, you know, really cool world of of helping people manage uh, really expensive at times healthcare costs. Do you have any other money tips for us that you could share about ways to deal with healthcare costs? Because I know that so many employers used to cover virtually 100% of healthcare, and now that's not always the case. And so I know a lot of listeners constantly talk about how expensive healthcare is, let alone if they're self-employed and have to have their own health care. So do you have any, you have any tips you could share with us? Um, especially, and this is a tip for, I guess, uh, I would call it diagnostic services. Um, you don't have to go to exactly where your doctor recommends you go. You can shop around. An x-ray is an x-ray, right? Or right. an MRI is an MRI, and you can shop around for things like that. And you can also shop around for um, other healthcare services. Uh, understanding your plan is really important. Uh, understanding which providers are in network versus out of network is really important. And just having the ability to put aside funds to cover these costs that might come up, right? Mm. You know, we talk about HSAs, putting dollars in there, you know, years before you need it. Healthcare is expensive and it's not getting cheaper. And so it's important that people continue to save for costs that may come up in the future. That's a really good strategy. And with that, I mean, I'm assuming that healthcare is, again, only going to continue to get more expensive. And do you think that HSAs, FSAs, like these are here here to stay? They might evolve over the years, but but this is definitely the new way of managing healthcare costs? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of flexibility with these accounts. And um, there's more flexibility that through our lobby, our uh, advocacy efforts that we're pushing forward as well. So um, recently, the, um, the IRS allowed masks and hand sanitizers to become FSA and HSA eligible. Oh, okay. It's probably a year on the late side, but they did <laughs> change the, those rules. And so we're always advocating for new expenses to be eligible. Something that's not eligible today that we're a lot that we're advocating for is um, health and wellness products. So when you think about your step tracker or your um, the heart band when you're yeah. running, a lot of those items are not eligible. Vitamins and supplements. Right. Right. So all those things are what we're working with um, uh, the IRS as well as uh, other government entities to make those products eligible because we do believe that the healthier an individual is, the better their overall life, the better their overall um, health is. If they take care of themselves, they won't be going to the doctor as much. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And uh, from your 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 history doing the lobbying, I mean, do most of these changes end up happening, or they just take really a matter of time? That's a very good question. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I think if I could read the tea leaves, I would. But in this case, it's really hard to say. Um, you know, there are a lot of different factors that go into um, what laws get passed, and unfortunately, we don't have that type of visibility. Right. Yeah. I understand. If we all had the crystal ball, <laughs> yeah. it'd make life a lot easier. Well, we, we talked about a lot about HSAs and FSAs. I, I am curious, as we kind of wrap up, is there one or two things that you think we should all know about or really have front of mind when we're thinking about FSAs and HSAs, especially? I know we're still in relatively the first part of 2021, but uh, any tips that you want to kind of leave us with of how we should be thinking about these going forward? Yeah, actually for FSAs, what we didn't cover is that those funds are available day one. So if you contributed 2,500 and assuming your plan, you're started on one month of 21, all 2,500 is available, even if you've not contributed that full amount. Oh, okay. That's awesome. So if you yeah. have any, yeah, if you have any large expenditures, you don't have to wait uh, versus a HSA. You have to contribute to that account 
and over time it builds up to that 2,500 or whatever the number is. Um, but for F saves, you can day one, go get your LASIK. You know, you'd have to save up for it. So there, are, you know, just understanding the type of account that you have and what you, um, what services or products that you need is a good way to plan for it. And also to keep track of how you're spending um, on your healthcare, because next year you might decide I need a different type of plan or I need to put more money into these accounts. And having that baseline is really important. I like that. That's such great advice. Understanding what you have. Well, tell everybody listening where they can go to find these great guides, resources, all sorts of things on uh, the websites and uh, just let them know how easy it is to, to find out this information. Sure. So um, at Healthy Commerce, we operate uh, three e-commerce brands, fsastore.com, hsastore.com, welldeservedhealth.com. And we're dedicated to selling only FSA and HSA eligible products, as well as having articles and eligibility lists to help you navigate the very complicated healthcare space. So take a look. I know I said it in the episode, but I am such a huge fan of HSAs and FSAs as well. I mean, it's such a benefit to be able to use tax advantage dollars to pay for all sorts of things for your health care, for those co-pays, for the -the over-the-counter stuff. It's just such a smart way to do money. And again, on this show, I'm going to talk to you over and over and over again about just smart ways to use your money because every dollar that you save is a dollar that you can put to work someplace else towards one of your other money goals, towards investing, towards paying down debt. So uh, if you have access to an FSA or HSA, definitely head on over to fsastore.com, hsastore.com, and welldeservedhealth.com. Not only will you be able to shop there, but you'll also be able to find amazing guides, everything that Rita talked about in this episode. I'll have links to all of this and more in the show notes, as well as links to our episode sponsors. And hey, if you love this episode, do me a favor, share it with your friends and family members who also you think need to be in the know about FSAs and HSAs. And be sure to follow Millennium Money and any podcast player that you're listening to right now so you can be sure to get all of our recent episodes. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new one. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com, where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value.